So I'm standing in the garage of my five-story multi-generational passive ICF house and I wanted to do a little video about why it is that my eight inch concrete core ICF walls are going to outperform uh, two by eight walls that are filled with uh, fiberglass. So one of the one of the reasons why I'm in the garage is because I actually have an exposed face of my ICF wall so you can actually see the concrete because Herein lies the magic. So concrete is a horrible insulator. I mean, the insulator value of this is a little bit more than like an R1. But on the outside, I've got two and a half inches of EPS foam. On the inside, I've got two and a half inches of EPS foam. That makes it so that there are no thermal bridges. Whereas when you're building with two by eights, um, you've got an eight inch thermal bridge that is allowing the heat in and allowing the heat out, uh, depending on the weather. And, uh, and so that's, that's one of the advantages of the ICF. But the real magic lies in this. It's that eight inches of concrete, because that eight inches of concrete represents a thermal battery. So basically, I have a free battery that is inside my walls, especially during the winter time. But I also it acts in reverse during the summertime. So let me explain. So um, Up to Code is one of the videos that does a lot of ICF, and he actually did an experiment up in Canada when it was negative 35 degrees outside. And he shut off all the heat to the office building, the ICF office building that they built. It was 70 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Came back two days later, it dropped from 70 down to 50 degrees. So 20 degree drop over two days, because of the thermal battery effect of that concrete core. Now, I think he was only doing a six inch concrete core, so my eight inch concrete core is gonna store even more heat during the winter to help with this whole process of keeping my balls more insulated, insulated, um, but at the end of the day, it's all about performance. So it isn't necessarily about what's on paper. So yes, on paper, the R, the, sorry, the, eight inch walls are gonna have like an R30 some odd, but in terms of performance, they've got a thermal bridge every 16 to 24 inches, depending on if they're doing advanced framing. And uh, they also um, only have the insulation in between, um, which on paper is, yeah, in the R30 range. My on paper is only in the R20 some odd range, R21 or 22, depending on how much credit they give me for the, the concrete. But it's that, it's how well does it perform is what really matters at the end of the day. Because when you're on the inside of the house, you don't want to be dealing with draftiness, which ICF walls, just without even trying, there are people who are getting a blower door score test of like 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And that's almost, well, that is passive house standards. And that's without trying. So I'm gonna be going above that. I'm actually going to be doing additional things with the weakest points, which is the windows. So I'll be doing, using something like Prosecco Liquid Flash to flash my windows um, uh, so that I'm able to keep the air from getting in except for underneath the window. And uh, because just in case your window does fail, you want any moisture to be able to get out. But around the sides and on top, absolutely, I'm gonna be doing the Prosecco Liquid Flash. And then on the inside of the window at the bottom, I also will be doing some caulking so that I'm able to really air seal my house. I'm shooting for a 0.25. So for those of you who aren't familiar with air exchanges per hour, in essence, remember back in the day when your mom said, close the, close the door, we don't want to heat the neighborhood or air condition the neighborhood. Well, that's because your mom was smart. She understood that if the air that you've paid to condition is just going right out the door, or right out the window, then you're losing a lot of money and a lot of comfort as well. So by making the house incredibly tight, it makes it so that the air that I condition inside stays inside. And uh, I mean, yes, 0.25 ACH is every four hours or so, all the air in my house ends up getting recirculated if there's a big wind windstorm outside. But for the most part, my air is staying inside. So what am I going to do to make it so that we're not breathing high levels of CO2 and, and uh, high levels of VOC and basically sick house syndrome? Well, I'm gonna have a heat recovery ventilator system. And my heat recovery ventilator system is over 90% efficient. So practically, that means that the air that I have inside, 
I'm going to be pushing out, so taking all the stair in, all the air inside a number of times. I think it's like um, uh, once every three hours, all the air gets replaced. So it pushes all that stale air out and uh, the incoming air, it tempers it. So the heat in the winter transfers over to the incoming air at about 90% efficiency. So if it's 72 degrees inside, then that incoming air, even though it's 10 degrees, um, it'll get heated up to like 66, 68. And uh, for me to then condition that air and bring it back up to 72, that, that doesn't cost much money at all. Compared to if you have traditional homes, like the ones over my shoulders across the street, their ACH, the, the new one is probably a, a three times a three ACH versus the old one right there. Yeah, that's probably in the 15 to 20 ACH range. And so they're having to condition a lot of the air during the summer and during the winter. Whereas when you build ICF, I mean, blow on that concrete. There is no, you're not blowing anything through the concrete. Yes, I had to do five lifts, so I have five cold joints. But in addition, I'm also going to be putting a polymer paint, um, basically a rubber paint on it, the outside, which will help to also seal up everything. Down underneath my crawl space, because you can also get air. I'm, I built on rubble rock, so you can actually get air coming up through the crawl space floor. So to prevent that, I, well, these days with code, they actually make you prevent it, but I'm using a product called Pango Wrap. And so that'll make it so that I don't have any air penetration there. Up on my roof, I have a product called uh, Shark Skin Ultra SA. So the air's not gonna be coming up there, there. So basically I have one big continuous air barrier around this entire thing. And my doors will be special doors so that I don't have where you have basically three latches when you open and close the door there's three latches that sucks it in and uh, going to the windows the other thing that i'm doing so that my house is going to outperform um, other people with two by eights or or other um, uh, ways to try to increase their wall insulation is instead of going with the regular sliding windows which i have had in the past and i've noticed a tremendous amount of dust you end up collecting a lot of dust on the inside dust where the sliding track is, that's coming from outside your house, which means that it's leaking. And uh, so wherever we could, we put picture windows, that will help. Um, and then in terms of for, for egress, you have to put in some sort of egress windows. And so we're going with casement windows. And yes, those casement windows are a pain in the butt to have to open and uh, close. But the idea is we're never gonna open and close our windows. There's never gonna be a need to open and close the windows unless there's a fire because I've got the HRV system, which is bringing, constantly bringing fresh filtered air. And that's one of the keywords is filtered. So I'll be able to filter out all the pollen. I'll be able to filter out the dust. I'll be able to filter out the bugs. Um, uh, a lot of times when you have the leaky houses, uh, two by eight construction, try as you might, if you're not really careful about the penetrations, the bugs are crawling through, um, uh, crawling through all the holes that you, that you put in for utilities. And, uh, and then also, um, if there is any wildfires, then I can just throw in a carbon filter, it filters out this carbon uh, smoke smell. So that's another one of the benefits of, of doing this. And it also allows me to overpressurize just a titch the inside of the house because by overpressurizing just to titch the inside of the house, it means that any air that is leaking is leaking out instead of in, because I don't want that pollen or that dust um, or that unconditioned air to be leaking in. I want to be able to control where the air comes in. So kind of like the mouth, your mouth is actually uh, just created for speaking and for eating. It was not created for breathing. Where you want to breathe is through those two nostrils because there's a filtration system up here. Not really a good filtration um, a system in the mouth. There is in the nose. So it's the same thing with um, homes is you want to control where the air comes in. And uh, so that's what I'll be doing with the HRV. So all of these details, when you combine them together, this is the reason why my R21 on paper, or R22 if I'm lucky, is going to outperform even homes that have gotten up to R50. Yes, on paper it says R50. My house is actually going to end up outperforming those R50s. But for sure it's going to be outperforming the um, uh, people who are doing the advanced framing and doing the 2x8 uh, 
construction so that they can increase their R value on the side. So anyways, just thought I'd shoot this little video to help you understand some of the basic building science principles in terms of why the sacrifice that I made to build with ICF is going to be paying off for my family for the next 500 years because this is going to be a legacy home. This home's uh, going to be sticking around in the family for many, many, many generations to come. And so hopefully they'll appreciate the DIY sacrifice that I made to um, uh, build a house that is comfortable, that is energy efficient, and uh, that um, uh, one is just a joy to live in for decades to come. So if you want to follow along on this crazy journey as I DIY build this thing, be sure to like and subscribe. And otherwise, thanks for watching.